Fucking connection issues, man. What up, though, Facebook? Assuming we have no more interruptions. There we go. I had to take care of that phone call privately for a second. Sorry about that. I had a uh, phone call to take care of privately off camera for a second, but back on. Yeah. I want a vocal cover. You want a vocal cover? You want a vocal cover, Facebook? Yeah. Moving on by asking Alexandria. <clears throat> That's a good song. Due to certain factors in the situation that had nothing to do with me, um, Summer chose to break break up with me because, you know, she didn't want her crazy lesbian ex starting drama in my life. And, you know, she's doing it to protect me, basically. And that I can respect. You know what I'm saying? Um, her crazy ex breaks into Summer's Facebook account deletes all the photos and the video she had of her only kid. And it was the only fucking video she had of her kid with her in it, with them together. And you know what I'm saying? And that that was, to quote Summer, her breaking points. When her ex just randomly decided to do that to her Facebook, she also deleted a lot of people from her friend's list, including me. So, you know, and some I didn't want her to start more drama in my life than I needed. So, you know, she had to make that decision. You know, she at least agreed to still be friends, which is nice. You know, um, I'm taking it as a learning opportunity to have more confidence in myself, you know. I've gotten pretty decent at guitar, and my singing voice is quite phenomenal. And you know what I'm saying? I can sing like Asking Alexandria, I can sing like Bring Me to the Horizon, I can sing like a bunch of bands. And I can use social media to a degree to show off my ability and my gift with music. And um, I guess dedicating this song to drama and, you know, maybe finding another girlfriend in the near future, you know, moving on from the shitty circumstances. You know, we've had a very mild winter here in Casper because it's like, what, 50 degrees out right now, Facebook. And um, and uh, you know, other fish in the sea, as they say, you know what I'm saying? Other fish in the sea. You 
you know, you got to realize that chicks dig bad boy musicians such as myself. You know, lately I've been favoring a tobacco pipe more than cigarettes just because they're so freaking expensive in Wyoming anymore. Looking six, seven dollars a pack, dude. Fuck that. Fuck that. You know, Wyoming tries to make tobacco prices more expensive because they want you to quote unquote quit. But the state's broken and needs money, and that's just the honest fucking truth. So instead of pretending like you give a shit about my fucking health, um, how about try telling us the truth for a change? Being honest with your Wyoming citizens instead of lying to us and acting like all of us are sheep. I went on a very much, much needed Pipe Thoughts video on that recently and I tend to think that I'll get to the song in a second but let me finish my train of thought I tend to think that because smoking is generally considered unhealthy but what isn't these days even exercise and lifting weights which is good for you but if you do too much of it you can strain yourself so even exercise can be unhealthy to a degree you know, people who smoke tobacco do it to relieve stress, much like much like anybody who would go to a gym to work out, put on their fucking headphones and just say, fuck the world and lift. You know what I'm saying? The best time to talk to me when I'm lifting weights and listening to music is don't. Um, because of my good genetics and natural big build, you know, I don't really need to go to the gym to get more muscular, but I can if I want to, you know. Listen to some metal and shit, yeah. I don't want to stop by Ozzy Osbourne. That right there is an awesome song to work out to. So when people tell me, oh, you shouldn't smoke, it's bad for you, I laugh hysterically about it. No, but all seriousness, though, my response is, what isn't bad for you? I have Asperger's, and the nicotine helps with my chemical imbalance. You know, if I'm stressing or having a lot to think about, or I'm just craving some nicotine, you know, I can sit down or whatever, smoke my pipe and relax. Now, in a way, this also helps with my trichoteria because, you know, I got a lighter in one hand and a pipe tool and a pipe in the other hand. So it's keeping my hands distracted so I'm not plucking out my hair and shit. <clears throat> You know, it's amazing when you haven't had physical, when you haven't had physical contact with a woman in so long, it does get depressing and lonely, but you have to rise above that to some degree. You know what I'm saying? Because as soon as it happens, it changes your world. You know what I'm saying? I found a girl that I couldn't get pregnant. Her two favorite colors are black and green, and she loves reptiles and listens to heavy metal. I'm like, dude, come on. That's just too good to be true. And unfortunately, it kind of was. I'm not saying that was a bad thing. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I'm just saying, you know. You know, it's just kind of like a double whammy. 
losing one of my favorite YouTubers and then my girlfriend breaks up with me. Damn. And anybody else in my situation would have felt the exact same way, to be honest. I got a rather negative comment on my Rip Angry Grandpa video, which is... Oh, it took you long enough to build up those tears. Really? And I kind of figured they were going to make fun of me in some way for crying a little bit. Fuck them. The thing of it was, I was trying not to. That's why it took so long. And I'm like, dude, this is some bullshit. I seen the Dame Drops video, Rip Amy Grandpa, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Angry Grandpa smokes catnip. <laughs> Uh, that was a funny skit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember that video. Angry Grandpa smokes catnip. That shit was fucking funny. <laughs> uh... I tend to notice that a lot of quote unquote non smokers, okay, if you're in a crowded area full of people and you have a craving for some nicotine, you fire up a cigarette, you might get a couple of dirty looks, but who gives a shit? It's your life. Enjoy it. If you enjoy smoking cigarettes, then who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? In moderation, you know, if you're a light smoker, it doesn't kill you nearly as fast. All these people who are griping about how bad tobacco is for you, you know, it's much like alcohol in that aspect. It's a pleasure of life, and moderation is key. Although there are some days where, you know, if I got pipe tobacco and that's all I got, I can burn through, like, three to four bowls in the course of like maybe 10 hours, depending on where I'm at, you know. I kind of feel like, you know, whenever you find some way to harass smokers, you know, if you're gonna raise the prices of tobacco and cigarettes because you want people to stop doing them, but really you're just in it for more money, that would be like Wyoming taxing the fuck out of fast food and saying, well, we're gonna make it more expensive because fast food's unhealthy and bad for you. And then when nobody's looking that fast food restaurant going to Wyoming and saying, Oh, by the way, thank you for uh, raising the prices on our product. I'm making money, so you scratch my back. Now I'm going to scratch your back. And really, that's exactly what's happening with the hike in cigarette prices. Now, I think if marijuana would have been like 100% legal just across the border that maybe Angry Grandpa could have smoked it for his liver cirrhosis when it was early, you know. Believe it or not, cannabis has been proven to help alcoholics with their liver. And if you know Angry Grandpa's story, you know he's a recovering alcoholic. He used to be a heavy ass drinker, and then he quit. And, you know, it may not affect you when you're younger, but when you're older, 
you know. And life is full of consequences, good or bad. Every choice you make, you know. So what if that night when I was hanging out with my buddy Jeremy Rogers, when summer came over, what if I hadn't gone home with her that night? You know, I wouldn't have had a month long relationship and I'd probably still be less confident, you know what I'm saying? It's easy to say, oh, I'll quit this and that, blah, 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 because of your shitty circumstances, but come on. You got some fine ass chick hitting on you because she wants to get down your pants. And she's clean. She doesn't have any kids. She's close to you in age. And she'd be banging. You can't tell me. You know what I'm saying? If the opportunity presents itself, then I'm not going to take it. Fuck that. Fuck denying that shit, man. Like, straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah, I got a lot of shit for dating Summer because of her short hair. I didn't care. People on YouTube made fun of her. People here in town made fun of her when we were walking around town. I didn't care. She made me happy, you know? So, this just makes me think, you know, you, you gotta be careful who you date, you know, because people are an unpredictable species at times. Now, the next thing I'm going to say before I bust into the vocal cover, Facebook, is if you're dealing with some sort of drama outside of your workplace, then leave it outside of your workplace. People have been trying to find out where I work and... I haven't said shit, you know. I learned that the hard way with the windy situation and you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. If anything, I try to have a productive and positive work ethic work day, you know what I'm saying? And um, the key to being a good worker Staying busy, even if it's super fucking slow. Find shit to do. Stay busy. You know what I'm saying? There's always stuff that needs cleaned. You know what I'm saying? I have a very small selection of people that I hang out with here in town or that I associate with. These are people that I've known for a minute and that I can trust, you know. So I have a small collection of homies that I know and associate with here in town, which is nice. A lot of people assume that just because I have Asperger's and then I'm goth that I don't have friends or um, you know what I'm saying? Which is a contradiction in itself, you know. I, I may not be the most um, social of people, but yeah. shit, if I do so good, if I do really good on this cover, I might just do like three more. And if I'm doing vocal covers for YouTube or Facebook, 
lim limiting myself to just four songs, seven max. That way I'm not tiring my voice out. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard of dog breeding? Yes. Well, everybody's heard of that, breeding dogs and such. Well, the cool thing about breeding dogs is you can make some pretty cool breeds, man. If you take a blue Great Dane and a Weiner Miner, that makes a blue Great Weemir. And that's a gorgeous dog. I don't care who you are. I want to crossbreed a blue great wee mirror with a blue nosed pit. So it would have Great Dane, it would have blue great Dane, Winer Miner, and Blue Nosed Pit. And then the offspring of that crossbreed that with like a black lab. You know what I'm saying? like the third or fourth generation of that would make some gorgeous dogs. But here's the conundrum. One, I can't have pets in my apartment. Two, I'm not in a position where I can afford to take care of pets. Three, blue great wee mirrors are freaking expensive. It's an expensive ass puppy. And four, I'd rather adopt from a shelter. And quite honestly, if you're going to buy from a breeder, you have to do your research, man. Because some breeders don't treat their dogs the greatest. Life has a funny way of changing for people. You know what I'm saying? These fucking trolls harassed me, got me fired from Wendy's. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was jobless for damn near a whole year. And then I got the new job, maintained it, get better at it. And then on top of that, keeping it hush hush, you know. I pretty much avoid talking about work on social media anymore because that's a hard lesson I had to learn with the Wendy's incident. But at the same time, if I hadn't gotten fired from Wendy's, I wouldn't have got the awesome job that I have now. So the things happen for a reason, I suppose. I mean, for a moment, I had a girlfriend and she got me a signed picture of Ozzy Osbourne. That's fucking kick ass. And I like that's that's like the coolest thing anything anyone's ever done for me in a hot minute. You know. And in a sense, I have that picture, you know, not just because Ozzy Osbourne's one of my idols, but also you know, I guess to remind me that things can change for the good if you give it time. And sometimes you're dealt a shitty fucking hand, Facebook, but you make the best of it. The 
something I've noticed uh, cops and Casper are going after meth. They're cracking down hard on that shit. You know, they're, they're more concerned about the hardcore drugs and less concerned about the softcore shit. Which is good, you know, it's progress. You know, you know, fidget spinners are illegal in a lot of states, but Wyoming is one of the few states where fidget spinners are not illegal. Uh, they were originally created for people with autism, ADHD, fidgeting problems, that sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? I tend to think if you have trichoteria and you feel like picking out your hair, you just pick up the fidget spinner and start fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? There's an idea. You know, so it had multiple purposes. But it became a trendy sort of thing, and kids were throwing them at each other. And parents everywhere were outraged. So instead of tackling the source at hand and just disciplining your children and saying, hey, you can't do that, they do something a bit more drastic, and they make fidget spinners illegal. Like, really, why you got to fuck it up? for the children who are behaving, for the children in school who have a hard time concentrating, and now they have to get super strict special permission from the school administrators and their school counselor and all that just, just to have a fucking fidget spinner. It's like, dude, really? That's fucking asinine, man. <sighs> I can't change the problems in our society. All I can do is bitch about them. Man. Now, being able to sing like Asking Alexandria won't get me very far because there's a couple people who can pull it off, but I try to be as accurate with it as possible. And the nice thing about Facebook is they don't care about copyright infringement. They're not going to silence your fucking video like YouTube will. And as long as I'm giving full credit to the artist, you know what I'm saying? Wait, he's wearing an Ozzy Osbourne t-shirt, but he sings like Asking Alexandria. That's crazy shit, man. Uh, now all I can do is smoke my tobacco and not stress life. Simple as that. There are people out there who struggle way worse than I do, and they still get up every day and go through their shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, Willows of Sorrow was a good album. But um, the trick with mixing a bunch of beats to make a solid beat for each different song, a solid individual beat, that's what I'm doing. In GarageBand, I can do like two software beats that, are, that come with the new GarageBand. And then GarageBand itself also has a bunch of pre-recorded beats already on it. And you can mix and match a shit ton of different beats to create that sound. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and in the light of certain situations, you know, I get pissy and I start talking a lot of mad shit. And 95% of the time when I talk shit, it's the fucking truth. And people don't like hearing it. There's a problem with being too blunt or just too goddamn real. It's like, ouch, man. Get a little ice for that before you do that? Shit. 
that's how a lot of people feel. And so sometimes, you know, you learn to uh, have the thought in your head and, you know, you smirk about it because it's funny. You know what I'm saying? Despite being socially awkward, I've become rather observant of human culture over the last couple of years, and we live in a fucking society that loves to preach anti-bullying out the ass, but then they hardly do shit about it. You know? As was reflected in one of the newer episodes of South Park, when Kyle tried to take down Terrence and Philip on that one new episode. Think about that for a second. And you know what's funny? Is South Park inadvertently ripped on Donald Trump super hard before they even realized it. I think Donald Trump parodied by Mr. Garrison on South Park is fucking hilarious, dude. Like, that shit is fucking priceless, dude. And what's funny about that is Caitlyn Jenner was parodied on South Park as his um, vice president or running mate, which is funny as fuck. And then a couple months after South Park pulled that shit, Donald Trump was like, transgenders can't serve in the military. So it's like, oh, ho, 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 South Park, that's funny shit. You just fucking ripped on Trump for his bullshit before he even pulled his bullshit. Ah. But Trump's a businessman. You think when Donald Trump realizes that Americans, the country he runs, supposedly, I use the word runs loosely. Um, the, the United States of America spent $53.3 billion on weed last year. Grand total. And Trump loves money. So the thought of $53.3 billion, he'd probably shit his pants. And then he would be called Donald Dump. Uh... Now, the government loves money, but then they keep marijuana illegal. That's, that's an oxymoron, if you ask me. Because big farmers trying to pay them out, bribing the government to keep it illegal. It's a crooked system. Just so they can keep Americans hooked on opioids and shit. When cannabis makes more money than these uh, bribes that the fucking drug companies give the government to keep cannabis illegal, you know... And on top of that, it's a lot safer than like 95% of the crap that's out there. I'm a pro marijuana advocate. I go down to Colorado and smoke when I can. Because it's legal down there, you know, it's safer that way. You know, I can buy alcohol legally in Wyoming, so, you know, one day it'll be legal and it'll be nice because Wyoming's broke as shit and legalizing pot in this state would make Wyoming very rich. I tend to think, okay, the lesser of the two, if Wyoming is cutting programs in the education system, that's kind of shitty. Some of the kids in the school system look forward to those programs, you know, if you're cutting things like music and, and that's the thing of it. When the states go broke, quite often if they're cutting programs, from the school system, quite often they end up cutting things like music from the school system because the state can't afford a decent music program. And if your state is that fucking broke, instead of cutting programs from your education system, it would make much more sense just to legalize and cash in on that cash crop. But... Yeah, like I said, I can't fix society's problems. All I can do is bitch about it. Slow clap for alcohol prohibition. That worked out fantastically, didn't it? But if you lie to children about cannabis, and then they get peer pressure to try it at a party, they try it and they realize, okay, it's not as bad as the man makes it out to be. 
So then they think, then they start thinking, well, what else have they lied to me about? And based off of that thought process, they start experimenting with other things. And on top of that, because marijuana is not completely legal, it's, you know what I'm saying, if it's not sold in a dispensary like it should be, it's being sold by drug dealers and shit. And if you don't know your drug dealer personally, they're lacing your weed with shit that you don't even know. A lot of parents are iffy on legalization because they don't want their kids having easier access to it, which makes sense because there are some studies that suggest that cannabis can slow the development of a developing brain. I disagree with that. You know what I'm saying? But kids can get a hold of tobacco and alcohol a lot easier than they can of cannabis. And honestly, if I was a parent and my kid was smoking pot, I would rather my kid get pot from a dispensary where I know it's safe, regulated, and unlaced. I'm just saying. Like, I'm not a parent, but I'm just saying. You know. And if you explain to these people like, like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you explain to them, hey, you know what I'm saying? Freaking... You explain it to them like that. These parents who are like, well, I don't know if we should legalize it because I don't want my kid to have easier access to it. You know what I'm saying? You explain it to them like that. And yeah, for real though. Fuck the sex doll. I should fucking save it for my student maker. <laughs> uh, I've been very fortunate that um, that uh, the winter's been so mild, but um, I could save up and get it and then park it and work on it and, sh and shit. You know what I'm saying? But driving it, I'd have to have a license. I don't have to have a license to buy it because it, you know what I'm saying? If it's a project car, you don't have to have a license to purchase that. You do have to have a title, though. Yeah. And, um, well, if I'm going to have a whip, it's at least going to be cool. And you can't tell me a 1950 Studebaker with a fucking... 428 Shelby Cobra dual exhausted engine wouldn't be bad the fuck ass. Big old fucking suicide ship to with a giant Cobra head on it. <sighs> That'd be one sweet little hot rod. Now you can fit a Shelby Cobra 428 in a 50 Studebaker. You have to modify the chassis in the frame so that it can support the weight of it so that it's safe to drive, obviously. Obviously. But it's expensive to do. Initially, it'd be cheaper to get the car, get it to point A to point B, and make it street legal so that it's safe to drive to a degree, you know. Get what it needs to make it, you know what I'm saying, drivable. And then just saving up money to hot rod it and shit. That's the way you do it. The Studebakers get a lot of crap for being shitty cars, but the truth of it is, any car can be shitty if you don't maintain it. The cars nowadays, the bodies are shit. They crumple up way too easily, which makes the repair bills more expensive. And on top of the car bodies being too easy to crush with the way they crush up to absorb impact and shit. All the computers and crap they got in the engine. Which means cars nowadays are way more expensive to repair than they were back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to get a, a car that's, you know what I'm saying? Like if I get into a head-on collision, the Studebaker versus a Prius, not saying it's going to happen. I guarantee you that fucking Prius is going to be a... The Studebaker might not even have a dent in it. The grill might come out, but you pick it up, put it in the back seat. 
drive away laughing at the Prius because it's all. <laughs> I'm stalling on the song, god damn it. I don't know if my voice is up for this, but I'll give it a shot. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it down though so it doesn't like the volume halfway down so you can still kind of hear the song, but you hear my voice over it. You like a lyrics video, so it's easier. Uh, okay. Check this shite out. How about Time of Your Life by Green Day after this? A good riddance cover. Because I think I might have accidentally deleted the Facebook Live video where I draw the vocal covers. I don't remember.